What are some of the things that PUAs get completely wrong in your opinion? Some things that, that, I mean, let's just say men, right? The things that men take get wrong, right? Or, you know, it's kind of why the PUA culture um, is looked at like such a joke because people will take, for example, men will say, uh, you know, back then they would say to peacock. So then men just kind of exaggerated that and they'd wear the silliest clothing Whereas peacocking really doesn't mean to look silly, right? It means to have something that makes you stand out. But men will take it so far that they'll just make make you just look very silly. Or, um, you know, the PUA industry will say it's a DHV, demonstrate higher value. And then men will just start bragging when in reality, that's just qualifying yourself. An actual high status male doesn't say anything about himself, right? Uh, at the end of the day, my entire conversational structure with how I get guys results is it's all about triggering the woman to speak at least 80% of the time. I never have to worry about what to say to a girl, which is most guys, uh, you know, number one question is, oh, what do I say? Or I'm running out of things to say, but you really shouldn't actually have much to say at all. You know, the most attractive thing and the, the, the most attractive conversation to a woman, when she's going to say that you're a good conversationalist is when you actually are able to create a lane of her investment for her to con converse with you, not for you to really say that much. You know, oh, no, no man who's ultimately high status and actually attractive is going to talk that much. You know, if you ever see a celebrity or if you ever see any, uh, a, a real success in business or a business icon, when, when you're talking to that man, he has almost nothing to say about himself. He's always going to just ask you questions. Um, you know, a lot of guys will call that interview mode and they, they think it's a boring conversation. But if the goal is sex, if the goal is intimacy, if the goal is dating a beautiful woman, then it sh the, the conversations are going to be a little bit boring. They're not always going to be this exciting roller coaster of a conversation because it's not ever going to get serious. You're not a, you know, if, if you want to make jokes, go be a stand up comedian or go be like a court jester, right? The goal should be to be the king of the castle, not some court jester where you're just kind of making jokes and everyone's like laughing at you, not with you. Most POAs are kind of a laughing stock. Most POA coaches are kind of a laughing stock, really, right? They're having you go off and do these like silly kind of things. Well, I mean, you can go to improv comedy classes if you want to be like apple, apple, tampon. If you want to just kind of, you know, do some sort of silly freedom of expression type of thing. Um, you know, I think men do way too many uh, random approaches. You know, uh, I think men do too many uh, approaches. The number one thing I see guys doing wrong out, out of anything is they approach women in the wrong venues. Uh, I spend two weeks dissecting venue selection for every single one of my clients. I have a thing called the Soul Circle Operating System. Uh, where it's very, very specific, where we track the approaches, the dates, we track a guy's life uh, from A to Z, from where he's at, and then we map it to the actual results. And we call it a social operating system because we have different formulas in the spreadsheets and different things like that. And it's a, it's kind of like a living, breathing ecosystem of their social circle. Uh, and there's different triggers that fire off based on how many approaches they're making and which venues and things like that. But, you know, I can, a, a lot of men will just do like random approaches. I, I remember one time I was working with a tech executive in San Francisco and I saw him approaching in Union Square in San Francisco. Uh, and he's basically approaching just like random tourists. I mean, damn near homeless people that are just walking around. This guy's extremely successful. And I was like, this is how often out of the hundred women you approach today, how many of them do you even like? And it was like one or two. Whereas I literally just really, I, I gave him a questionnaire. I just dialed it in of what type of woman he actually wants short term and long term switch the venue that he was going to based on and it's all it's not always like the hottest nightclub or the hottest this or that it's very specific to what he's actually trying to obtain and so that's step one step two is making genuine friends with all the staff there and he was introduced then to about two women a day that were exactly his type without actually changing his game his charisma his personality at all so then he was actually able to just be himself so i would definitely say the biggest issue is i uh, want identifying what you're actually in all this for I think a lot of men, uh, I see a lot of guys right now becoming like photographers and uh, taking all these photos of girls and whatnot, but they're an entrepreneur or they're a software programmer. Well, if you if you don't actually want to be a photographer, you're not really going to, I mean, most photographers aren't dating the hottest girls in the world. They're, you know, photography is not exactly a high income skill. You know, if you have a passion for photography, go for it because it's, you know, if, if you enjoy it, then do it for fun. But go, it's like going to meeting women at a park in you know, uh, Washington Square Park in New York City or Union Square in San Francisco or Leicester Square in London. Uh, that's literally a path that even if you absolutely crush it there, you're not going to be getting women that are any more attractive than you are. So what's the point? 
right? You, you, if you, however, there's a certain coffee shop, there's a certain sushi restaurant in London, in um, Singapore, in New York, whatever, right? That actually has all of the women you'd ever want to meet. And if you just create a bit of a honeypot, if you create a bit of a Venus flytrap around that, make yourself the guy to know at that one venue, then you can actually draw in every woman you'd ever want to meet into your life. But I think a lot of men kind of cloud their actual goal. A lot of men don't admit that they're in this to actually date women. You know, you kind of have, um, you know, I like a lot of things that uh, guys like Andrew Tate say, but a lot of guys take it too far where, which is then obviously why Andrew Tate has all the problems that he has. But if you just take some of the platitudes, a lot of the platitudes are are correct. But what it is, is, I mean, not a lot of guys who love Andrew Tate get very much results with women because they're too busy playing in the platitudes of what he says, right? They're too busy trying to be a high value male, right? In this kind of loop of what high value male even means and not spending enough time owning up to the fact that they do want to date, pick up, have sex with a beautiful woman. So what you have to realize is there's all these different paths that guys can go down. There's all these different doors that you could open. But you kind of have to be careful what's behind door number three. You know, a lot of times uh, I see a lot of guys just randomly building social circles and they're doing anything from photo shoots to they're doing random uh, charity events or group dinners. Um, these are all things that I've done and I've coached guys in. But I actually backed off of all events because I don't want to teach guys how to be a wedding planner, or a wedding coordinator. You know, I'm not teaching guys how to take on a second job. Most guys have to realize that there's a straight line approach to meeting the women that they want to meet. And, um, but the first step is owning up to that. The first step is actually looking at yourself in the mirror and telling yourself, do you have the girl standing next to you that you actually want or do you not? And telling yourself you're actually in this to meet very attractive women. But then once you do that, then again, venue selection, identifying your own goals. You know, again, I have a very, very specific onboarding process when I, when I onboard clients to even see if they're a good fit for me or not, uh, and to see if I'm a good fit for them. And the first thing that really identify is, do you even know the type of girl that you're after? And most of the time, at first, guys say hot, doesn't give me shit, ambitious. You know, they don't act. I mean, I, to the point of like height ranges, to the point of, um, you know, what their family is like, to the point of their body measurements, brunette, blonde, whatever. I mean, I really, really hone in. What's the type of girl this guy is after? Is he into a girl, women who are doing yoga, women who are into whatever that might be? Once you hone that in, the actual steps are pretty straightforward. Um, so those are some of the things I think men need to improve and change.